Hi, my name is Michael Ayer, and I'm one of the authors of an original article published in the December 2018 edition of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology on the topic of optic neuritis in children with relapsing demyelinating syndromes. Optic neuritis may occur as an isolated event or as part of a relapsing demyelinating syndrome, such as MS, aquaporin 4 associated NMOSD, or MOG associated disease. In this study, we looked at a cohort of 42 consecutive children attending for routine follow-up at three specialist centres over one year with a diagnosis of a relapsing demyelinating syndrome and one or more episodes of optic neuritis with three main aims. Firstly, to test if there were differences in the clinical, electrophysiological and microstructural parameters of optic neuritis in MS versus antibody-associated disease. Secondly, to identify the clinical and paraclinical characteristics of children suffering worse long-term visual outcome. And thirdly, to explore the relationship between retinal nerve fibre layer, RNFL thickness and clinical parameters. RNFL thickness was assessed using optical coherence tomography, which is a non-invasive imaging modality using near-infrared light to provide micrometer scale measurements of the retinal architecture and is sensitive to small changes in the thickness of the nerve fibre layer, which can indicate axonal injury in the anterior visual pathway. In this slide, the left side shows a normal eye, the right side shows an eye with optic atrophy, and the quantitative data generated is on the bottom row, where the graph represents RNFL thickness along a circular path around the edge of the optic disc, which is indicated by the green circle on the middle row. In this study, we found that long-term visual impairment occurred in 40% of children with a relapsing demyelinating syndrome and one or more episodes of optic neuritis. Children with antibody-associated disease suffered more frequent relapses of optic neuritis than children with MS, as shown on the left figure, but did not have significantly worse visual outcomes, as shown on the right figure. Although it should be noted that the squares on the right figure represent the eyes of children with acroporin-4 antibody MOSD, of which there were only four children in the study, and two of whom were registered blind at final follow-up. In contrast, none of the 16 children with MOG antibody-associated disease were registered blind. The key finding in this study was the absence of any correlation between number of relapses and visual outcome, alongside a significant correlation between RNFL thinning and worse visual outcome. In the discussion, we suggest that RNFL thinning as an objective measure of neuroretinal loss may be a more sensitive parameter for monitoring disease activity and prompting escalation of treatments uh, than clinical relapses in children with a relapsing demyelinating syndrome and a history of optic neuritis. We also discussed some of the other findings in the study, including nine cases in which we were able to look at longitudinal data on RNFL thinning, and two cases in which we identified clinically silent optic neuritis, in which the electrophysiological studies were abnormal in eyes thought to be unaffected from the clinical history. We hope you find this paper useful in your clinical practice.